Hey, good afternoon, guys. So today we're gonna do a quick video to show you how to set up the server, the proper server on the Swift client. The main objective here is to use it eventually on a video that I'll be recording shortly after here for Xplane and get our view working for Xplane. Application may be similar for other simulators, uh, those being P3D or FSX, but uh, mainly my main objective here is for Xplane as Xplane is the platform I use. So starting with that, it's going to be a quick video. It's mainly we're going to talk about requirements and then the steps to follow to properly set up a couple of things in Swift, on Swift, and uh, once that is taken care of, will be ready for the next video which will take you through the steps of uh, getting the tower view properly set up and, and functional so specifically for today what you need to have already is the swift client properly installed we're not going through that on this video there is enough information on the internet for that matter i'm just going to drag this window here shortly to show you this is the video that i followed is, is from Drago the flying slab and uh, it's about a as you can see 15 minute video uh, he takes you through the different steps all the way from downloading the client installing it setting it up some people say it's, it's lengthy it's uh, complicated in reality to tell you the truth uh, yes if you compare that with some other platforms out there uh, X Squawk Box and perhaps vpilot it's a little bit more taxing you, you need to spend a, a few more minutes but truly is, is nothing is nothing significantly complicated just follow the steps and uh, and you'll have this client if this is something you're looking for and uh, mainly for me it was important because with Xplane I hadn't been able to get a tower view going and this has allowed me to get to that point so this is the the site on YouTube we're not going through that so I'm just gonna drag it out and uh, I'm going to start by launching the Swift client. I already have a shortcut on my desktop that uh, launches the application. And uh, this is the GUI client. And with that, quickly what you do, you go to settings and then you go to servers. And under servers, it'll take you to this screen. And what you do is you just need to populate these fields here. Some of them are pre-populated. They come this way by default, as you can see. And the good thing about it is that you don't need to change anything. Uh, the only thing we need to do is, I'm just going to put a name to this, and this is going to be Tower. Tower View. And description is the same. Tower View. You can you can populate those fields with whatever information you, you like uh, as your preference. Eco and type, just leave it as is, VATSIM and FSD VATSIM. Here on the address, it's important you need to populate here and manually type local host. Local host, the port is 6809, it comes by default, it's pre populated, just leave it like that. And then type in your VATSIM credentials, your VATSIM ID, and your password and save so you see as you as soon as you click save it already shows it here as tower view so you know that it's been saved and as of this point you're good to go you can close it you can leave it open in my case i'll leave it open because uh, we'll follow right into the next video to show you how to get the tower view going but as far as setting up the server that you will need to use eventually to connect to vatsim this this is it very simple straightforward I guess you could if you wanted create different ones but from what I've seen this is you only need to set it up once and you can use this server with this properties with this address and this uh, port for whichever tower you're, you're planning to control because it is as you can see it's a generic one it's not specifically linked to a given tower position like Cal Calgary Tower or Edmonton Tower for that matter it's, it's just a tower view so as far as this video is concerned um, that's all I have for you thank you